I see that you've gone through some both, and it, it's hard. I really, really can second guess it a lot. It breaks my heart where I'm like, this sh never happened if, you know, I wasn't in this life. And how it happens, you know, it happened in Miami in a, a friend of mine's uh, home, which he allowed me to have the wedding, beautiful home by the, uh, by the canal. And it was in Miami and we had like 250 people, like her family, my family, some friends. Um, it was crazy. It was a beautiful wedding. You know, it was outside, beautiful ceremony. Uh, she looked, you know, stunning. I looked, you know, I looked stunning. And, and it was good. It was actually, it was hot because it was in February and it was like in the middle of the summer, pretty much in Miami. And it was amazing. We started at two o'clock, I believe, and it ended to like five o'clock in the morning. You know, paparazzi, they were there, you know, trying to take pictures, you know, filming, you know, on the, over the fence. I mean, it was a great, great experience. You know, it was happy, it was sad because you can, you know, you can see her like tears, you know, when she was getting married, I cried. I cried because I, I couldn't believe it. You know, I was like, I was totally in love. We were totally in love. But head down to the comments and let me know which of the two clips you feel he's talking about someone that he has respect for, that he looks up to, and which one he's talking about someone where he doesn't really have that same amount of respect. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck. After months of speculation, the pair are calling it quits. Starting with the very first Grammy record of the year, which was Volare. I was really, really impressed. I love this week too. I wish we agreed more when... <laughs> we're technically still married. Wow, so technically while we were married, we did agree at some point. Yes. Do you want this divorce? You know, it, it's, a, it, it's a decision that we made jointly. And that's how it's... Mark also told his own version of the story, saying the divorce was just one of those things and he would always love J-Lo. It was a realization on both our parts, so... You know, it wasn't shocking. These things happen. These things happen. What do you tell Max and Emmy? Three years. You know, we're 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 um. I'm always gonna be daddy. You understand what I'm saying? And 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 they're used to me traveling and Jennifer traveling and uh, you know we Skype all the time and and uh, you know trying to maintain that presence. They're still young. You know what I mean? Do you love Jennifer? I'll always love Jennifer. Yeah. I always love Jennifer. She knows that. But the important thing is that she knows that. Anthony have like this like um, a not together couple thing down pat. Oh yeah, like, yeah, down. yeah. No, we're we're like best friends. You know, so we're, ma we're making an album right now. Are you which I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> we're making a Spanish. Actually, he's making helping me make my Spanish album. No kidding. And um, you know, at first I was like, like we're good, like with the kids and everything, but Let's if we start working together, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like, is that gonna be like, uh, we're gonna start going at each other again? And it was, it was, it's been awesome. Honestly, I think it's even helped our relationship. It's no made kidding. It's even better. Yeah, we're just in a really great place and um, it's, it's, it's wow. great. And the kids, they get to spend time with the two of us more together and see us working together. And it's just good for them. It's good for us. It was just good for the, the whole family. The whole Jennifer Lopez is getting a lot of backlash after her movie and following documentary. Here's why she's not relatable. First, she's trying too hard. She keeps referring back to her time in the Bronx, but the people there don't see themselves in her. Second, she has a reputation for treating people under her like dirt. The reason is she's super hard on herself and people like that perfectionists tend to also be hard on other people too hard. Third, she refuses to sign autographs or even have short conversations with people. If you're famous, you have to deal with the fans. Fourth, she lacks humility. She thinks she works harder than other people. She has this arrogance that says, I'm better than other people, which is probably why other celebrities wouldn't participate in her documentary when asked by her team. Fifth, She's rich and famous, yet it's never enough. It feels as if she's still longing for recognition, which was confirmed by her husband, Ben Affleck, in the documentary. This addiction for recognition is off-putting to people because it means she hasn't done the work on herself. And this is why people don't like her. She has all the resources in the world, and yet she's still disconnected from herself, which makes it hard for us 
to connect with her. If she really wanted to connect with people, she could be more vulnerable about what it means to be a successful woman, being a mom and wife, going through divorces. That's what we can relate to. I just said to my kids, tell me, show me the articles that that prove that social media is good for teenagers, and then we'll have the conversation. Oh, oh but my gosh. Find Fact. scientific evidence that um, matches what I have that says that it's not good for teenagers, then we'll chat. And how do they feel at this point? Uh, my eldest is grateful. Wow. See, and you we'll just gotta see. be in the long haul. Though. I mean, it's a long haul. I have a couple more to go, so just knock on wood. <laughs> we'll see if I really hang in there. Well, being the child of uh, famous parents is really not something that many people can understand, and, I, and I, I feel for them for that because they didn't choose that. Well, there was a solid decade where there were five or six cars minimum and up easily up to 15 or 20 on the weekends outside of my house at all times. And looking back on that, I really feel the stress of it. I really, it may, I could cry talking. <laughs> I, I, was, I mean, I'm 48 and I find, I called my parents and said, Dad, I'm gonna pierce my ears. And he said, okay, Jennifer, <laughs> um, but let's see. That we we didn't we didn't wear makeup we didn't have our nails painted we were very good girls. My mom was narcissist center of attention you know life of the party type person. I got very used to being around people like that. The combination of the two of those things set me on a course to be with those type of people. What I started to realize was I'm comfortable with this, but. I don't like this. Selfish. This is not what I want. This is just looks like a dead chicken. And she doesn't even try to hide her annoyance. Fans fell in love with JLo for being Jenny from the block. But according to her employees, it's all a mask. And underneath it is a pretentious woman who treats service people like dirt. I want something real. And it's easy for her to offend her colleagues and even those closest to her. But is she really that bad? My kids were at that age where they were like challenging the status quo and really, you know, kind of looking at you. And now it's not all like hearts and flowers anymore. Now it's kind of like, you know, wh why are you telling me to do that? I don't want to do that. You know, just like constantly kind of the push and pull of being a teenage mom. Is that Max or Remy? Who's the most challenging? Uh, both of them. Yeah. Both of them are. Oh, oh my gosh. Find Fact. scientific evidence that um, matches what I have that says that it's not good for teenagers, then we'll check When you say you don't drink, you don't drink at all? You just drink? No, I'm not, a, I'm not a drinker. I just never started. It was another one of those things my mom just never, you this, know, was this like, is what don't I drink, <laughs> don't do drugs, you're gonna die. I'm like, okay. <laughs> You know, it's just like in my head. Hey, Jennifer. It's Jennifer Garner to the rescue as she descended on Ben Affleck's home and staged an intervention after her ex apparently fell off the wagon. Can you guys please do me a favor? Yes, yes. Just out of respect. Yes. Can you give some space? Bo and Ben Affleck. Oh, that's there. Well, she's sniffing. I think she does taste his drink. When really? she grabs it, people are assuming to think that it's to ensure it didn't have alcohol in it. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez at the shotgun wedding party. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I promise it doesn't yeah. have alcohol in it. You can, in the morning, you can either be making breakfast for your kids, making their lunch boxes, or you can be getting paparazzi ready. <laughs> and so, you know, I know which way I'm gonna go. When I was reunited with the love of my life and we decided we were gonna be together forever. One thing you can always trust in, oh God, family. We do our best, we do try our best. You don't need to worry about Ben, let me just tell you. That they were seen in public together in, gosh, uh, more than a month. Yeah, yeah 47 Four days. 47 days. The flowers were not for Ben, yeah. but they both showed up with flowers. They went to go see one of Ben's kids was starring in a play last night, a school play, and Jen was there as right. well with Emmy. And they all went in together as a family and they went and saw the play. And then afterward, Ben drove Jen and Emmy home to Beverly Hills. Mm. <laughs> okay, we're not doing that. Oh, Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You know better than that. Come on. Don't come in here with that energy, please. It doesn't, I feel like, actually get mentioned enough, if I could just end on one yes. thing, is that Jen is a producer on this movie. Yes. And 
the reason why I'm here and the reason why Sterling was in this beautiful movie is because Jen cares. And Jen cares about things like representation and diversity. And she's a boss. And she's an incredible creative and an icon. And that's what I think we should celebrate her for today. Well, that was quick. Apparently, Ben and Jen are already on the outs again after less than two years of marriage. Love in some ways. Yeah. But then they realized there was difficulty and maybe, you know, they've grown apart. They're two completely different people. And this is like their one public outing in weeks because he didn't even come support her at the Met Gala when she was a co-chair. So like, obviously this was planned and it's just so fun. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck are reportedly selling their home amid breakup rumors. According to multiple outlets, the couple's Beverly Hills home, which they bought together back in May of 2023 for $60.8 million, has been quietly placed on the market. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck are clearly in a rough patch in their marriage of, what, less than two years at this yeah. point? Because we know they are living in separate households right now. They got back together, it was just like, I want to make music again. I want to get back in the studio. I was very, very inspired. And when I think about, I was like, the same way This Is Me then captured that moment in time without me realizing it. Mm. The first time we kind of fell in love, I wanted to capture this moment in time. And now it's J-Lo and Ben in You've Got Mail. Subject line, yo girl, remember me? So Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez didn't just suddenly start hanging out together two weeks ago. He started reaching out to her in February, sending her emails. I've always, for better or for worse, have followed my heart and my, and my instincts, and this is where it brought me to. Why are people always worried about what face Ben has on? Like, if he did, if Ben, like, walks out the house and he's like... Ever wondered why Jennifer Lopez's relationships often end in turmoil? According to her exes, Mark Anthony and Alex Rodriguez, they think they have the answer, they're revealing secrets and pointing fingers, hinting at what really happens behind the glamorous facade. The Jenny from the block we thought we knew might have a more complicated side, and her former partners are ready to share their stories. Rumor has it that JLo and Ben Affleck are currently dividing their $60 million mansion with no prenup involved. But this isn't just about broken hearts, it's about serious money. And that's just the beginning of the latest celebrity drama. Curious about what's really at stake? JLo's love might be priceless, but her divorces certainly aren't. Get ready to dive into the drama, the dollars, and the dirt that's emerging about Jennifer Lopez. Did JLo outmaneuver Ben Affleck? The rumors are flying, and Mark Anthony and Arad are spilling the tea on Jennifer's love life, which as it turns out, isn't all glitz and glam. Let's start with Mark Anthony, JLo's ex-husband and the father of her twins. According to insiders, he's not exactly thrilled with how things are playing out in Jennifer's romantic life, and who can blame him? He's trying to raise kids amidst all this Hollywood chaos. Sources say Mark has been watching JLo's relationship roller coaster with growing concern and frustration. It's not just about her moving from one high profile romance to another, it's about how all this attention is affecting their children. Imagine being a teenager and seeing your mother's love life splashed across every tabloid and gossip site. That's a tough situation for anyone to handle. But here's where things get serious. Mark has apparently reached his breaking point with JLo's latest reunion with Ben Affleck. Remember when Benefer 2.0 made headlines? While the public was caught up in the romance, Mark was seeing nothing but red flags. For seven years, Mark and Jennifer were one of Hollywood's ultimate power couples. However, their relationship came to a surprising end just six weeks ago when they announced their divorce. Ben Affleck, dealing with the breakup in his own way, has taken to riding his new motorcycle, calling it his little escape. Mark claims that the reason for their breakup is simple the marriage just wasn't working anymore. Both of them saw it coming, so it wasn't a total shock. But the hardest part, explaining it to their twins, Max and Emmy. Despite everything, Mark is determined to be their father no matter what. The kids are used to their parents being on the go, and they're handling it as best as they can. However, Mark is worried that all this back and forth in JLo's love life is messing with their kids' sense of stability. And let's be real, kids need stability like fish need water. You might be thinking, but don't Mark and JLo have this whole co-parenting thing down well? It turns out that the Benefer situation is putting some serious strain on their co-parenting relationship. It's like trying to keep a house of cards standing in a windstorm. 
Now, let's talk about Alex Rodriguez, JLo's ex-fiance and baseball superstar. He's not just sitting on the sidelines watching the Benefer drama unfold. Word has it that Arad is feeling pretty bitter about how things went down with JLo, and can you blame him? One minute he's planning a wedding, and the next he's watching JLo reunite with Ben Affleck on every magazine cover. But here's the thing, without a prenup, and with all these shared assets, this divorce could get very messy. Legal experts are already predicting it'll be a complicated battle. There's been chatter that JLo was so eager to lock things down with Ben that she refused a prenup, trying to prove that this time their love was for real. Now, rumors suggest that Ben might be slowing down the divorce process because he's looking to cash in, possibly coming after half of everything JLo made during their marriage. Was it just about the money? But was there a deeper agenda? Were they in it just for the money? Let's be honest, Jennifer Lopez doesn't need any of Ben's money. These two first met over two decades ago, and despite hitting pause on their love story in 2004, they rekindled their romance in 2021 with a bang. By 2022, Benefer 2.0 had tied the knot. Now JLo is gearing up to release her ninth album and who's her biggest cheerleader? You guessed it, Ben, standing by her side, waving those pom-poms high. But this isn't just about the music. Together, this power duo has a combined net worth that's truly staggering over half a billion dollars. However, let's not get it twisted, JLo is definitely carrying the heavier financial load in this relationship. Let's break down the numbers together. JLo and Ben are worth around $640 million, with JLo being the major contributor to that figure. As the drama continues to unfold, it's clear that the stakes are high, both emotionally and financially. What was once a fairy tale comeback story is now turning into a legal and financial saga that could keep the tabloids buzzing for months to come. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck have amassed a serious fortune together, and it's not just from their movies and music. We're talking about luxury properties, brand deals, and more. But here's the real kicker JLo owns a whopping 70% of that combined wealth. She's sitting on a cool $450 million, thanks to her incredible success in both the music and film industries. With over 80 million records sold, her on the six tour raked in a hefty $765,000 per show, and her Dance Again World Tour pulled in over $50 million. JLo isn't just breaking records, she's shattering them. And let's not forget her Hollywood earnings. JLo is as savvy in business as she is in performing, usually commanding around $9 million per film. To put that into perspective, she earned $1 million for her breakout role in Selena. Beyond the big screen, she also made a splash as a judge on American Idol, earning a staggering $20 million per season. Now, let's shift gears to Ben. Compared to JLo, his fortune is more modest, ranging between $150 million and $190 million. But don't underestimate him, he's still got substantial wealth. His property near Savannah, Georgia, where they got married, is worth over $7 million. Together, they also splurged on a $64 million mansion. This luxury estate boasts eight bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, and a jaw-dropping 16,000 square feet of pure opulence on a 1.13 acre compound. As for his income, Ben pulls in around $22 to $24 million annually, largely from his work as a filmmaker, actor, and brand endorser. His movie paychecks typically range from $12 million to $15 million. Just to flex a little, his earnings from playing Batman in 2014 alone were worth $35 million. However, that's before you factor in his gambling debts, which some fans speculate could be one of the reasons behind the turmoil in their relationship. Fans are buzzing with theories. Some suggest JLo saw the writing on the wall and knew she'd have to split her earnings, which might explain why she canceled her tour. Others think Ben planned this rush to the altar without a prenup, let JLo buy the house, and now plans to take her to the cleaners. Instead of a clean break, it seems Ben might have been stringing her along with the hope of reconciliation. One fan didn't hold back, saying he's disgusting. She can't keep playing with these guys, she's risking everything for losers, but this drama isn't just about JLo and Ben. There's the whole public image aspect to consider. JLo has been through more high-profile breakups than most people have had hot dinners. Could this be the one that finally tarnishes her golden girl image? Or will she manage to spin it into yet another comeback story? You know what they say history repeats itself. JLo's romantic history seems to be on a loop. From Ojani Noah to Ben Affleck twice, JLo has been jumping from one high-profile relationship to another. But it's not just about her anymore. 
Her exes are starting to speak out, and they're painting a picture that's not exactly flattering. Mark Anthony, Alex Rodriguez, and even Ojani Noah seem to be sharing the same perspective, and it's definitely not love, don't cost a thing. While no one is painting JLo as a villain outright, relationships, especially those in the spotlight, are undeniably complex. But when three of her exes are echoing similar thoughts, it raises the question, is there some truth to what they're saying? Not all fingers are pointed at JLo though. Some fans are turning their attention to Ben Affleck, accusing him of being checked out long before the marriage ended. One fan didn't hold back, saying, why is everyone acting like Ben Affleck is? An innocent bystander? He's always been shady. This is just another chapter in his long list of scandals. Another fan chimed in, she's better off without him. He never deserved her regardless of whose side you're on. One thing's clear the Benefer drama isn't ending anytime soon. Will JLo and Ben work things out? Will their mansion become the ultimate battleground in this celebrity split? Only time will tell. Meanwhile, the world is watching, waiting for the next bombshell to drop. Until then, all we can do is speculate, gossip, and wonder what the future holds for JLo and her complex web of love, loss, and luxury.